Hello. Well, in Energy 101, we've been talking about oil and oil independence and energy independence and that uh, centers around oil imports. And I uh, thought it would be a good time to talk about something we hear a lot about with the new technology being commercialized and coming on the forefront, and that's electric cars. So uh, l let's look at electric cars and what, the, what they mean. It turns out I, there's a lot of confusion over electric cars. There are electric cars and there are electric cars. All electric cars are not created equal, as I like to say. Uh, some of them have been out for a while and others are new, so th let's just try to orient those. And again, the reason that the electric cars are important is their impact on oil, because 70% of our oil is used for transportation. So if we're going to do anything about uh, oil independence and oil imports, we need to do something about transportation. And there's several things we can do. Uh, electric cars is one of them, but not just any electric car. But electric cars can save oil. Uh, they replace oil with electric electricity, uh, energy, electric energy. Uh, of course, so that's good because we get electricity in the U.S., not all countries, but in this country we get all of our electricity from coal, natural gas, hydro, wind, solar, and some biomass that I don't have listed there. Uh, and uh, so that's good because uh, due to the fact that natural gas price is about five times per unit of energy that of natural gas and coal, uh, we just, it, that makes no economic sense for anybody to be burning oil in an electric power plant to generate electricity when they can burn natural gas and coal. Uh, so uh, what electric cars, those that run all on all electricity, accomplish is, is they don't burn any oil because you don't fill up at the filling station with gasoline and they run off electricity all of the energy of which comes from these natural resources that we listed that does not include oil which is good from the energy independence viewpoint. Uh, so what are some examples of the cars? There, there are three categories of uh, electric cars. The Prius hybrid car was the first that that got the got the uh, uh, name of an electric car, but that, that's really a little bit of a, or quite a bit of a misnomer. Uh, Prius came out in uh, t 1997 in Japan, so it's that this technology has been around for, what, 15 years, and is a good example of how long it takes a technology in the automobile industry, such as this, that's revolutionary, to penetrate the market. And there's still much less than 1% of the cars on the road that are hybrid cars. Uh, they went worldwide. The Toyota with the Prius went worldwide in their market in 2001. And uh, they've been available in the U.S. since then. And uh, just in 2012 and 2013, they've come out with um, some additional models. So they got larger Prius, uh, Priuses and smaller Priuses. But uh, the Prius particularly uh, shines in urban traffic, and let's look at why. Uh, first, the first key point is, is the hybrid car, like the Prius, only uses gasoline. It never plugs in to the electrical outlet to recharge a battery. It ha doesn't have that capability. It runs only on gasoline. So the the oil that it saves is only due to the increased miles per gallon that it gets over a conventional car that's not a hybrid. Uh, all It does have electricity on board though, but it generates its own. It generates its own electricity from the engine at times when the engine is not needed for other things for, to power the car and stores that electricity in small battery packs. In a small battery pack. Now, why does it increase miles per gallon? Well, because it has a braking regeneration system on it, which is one of the key things that causes the uh, the Prius to and the hybrid cars in general. There, most manufacturers have several hybrid models now, but it allows it to regenerate braking energy. Just think about it when you are driving around town, which is when the hybrid really comes into its own. 
uh, you, you're driving down the street, you get a stoplight or a stop sign, so you put the brakes on, you, uh, you dissipate uh, that kinetic energy that you had from the car moving into heat that heats your brakes up, and that, that energy is gone. And then the stoplight turns green and you accelerate and now you've got to add all of that kinetic energy to get the car accelerated back up to 25 miles per hour, say, uh, to accelerate it again. And then the next stoplight, you dissipate all that energy with brakes. Well, what the hybrid does is it, it uses a generator. When you step on the brake, it doesn't use friction on the brakes to slow it down. It cranks up a generator that loads the car down and slows it down. So it generates electricity from the kinetic energy that is recouped from when the car is slowed down. So it regenerates the kinetic energy of the car and stop and go traffic in particular. The battery pack is used to store the uh, electricity and then generally uh, when you accelerate then from the light, electricity is dr that electricity that was uh, generated from stopping is put back, put into an electric motor that helps drive the wheels and accelerate back to uh, 20 or 25 miles per hour. So that's a big factor. Another thing that it does, it always cuts the engine off if you stop it when the car is stopped. And you have to pay attention to even notice that. But it, uh, the, the car engine cuts off so it doesn't burn fuel when it idles, and that's a significant item also. But it has a very small battery pack. Uh, if you just didn't have the engine and you locked it out, you, you can travel less than a mile on the batteries if they're fully charged. So it has a very small battery pack, so the cost penalty of the expensive batteries is not a big one. Uh, the range is the same as a conventional car with similar miles per gallon. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, it was introduced in uh, 2001 worldwide. Uh, the, uh, the range is an issue because in, in the all-electric car that we'll get to in just a minute, but in here it's just a matter of how much gasoline you have in the tank. Now, the miles per gallon is typically in real life in the high 30s or low 40s. Uh, other conventional vehicle miles per gallon uh, numbers have come to compete with the Prius and hybrids in general. Uh, so you can buy cars that'll get high 30s in the uh, in typical kind of driving, uh, similar to a hybrid. So, man, that's the whole point of this hybrid technology. So, the uh, particularly if you, in Europe, when I, I I've spent several years, uh, a semester at a time, lecturing over in Europe, and uh, they always give me a, uh, a European diesel car, turbo diesel, and you wouldn't know it was, it was diesel until, unless you looked under the hood. Uh, and it performs like a conventional car, cranks on cold weather just like a conventional car. And I always get over 40 miles per gallon in that car, uh, driving around town and driving on the autobahns at high speed. So there are other ways to get high efficiency in automobiles other than hybrids, but hybrid was one of the first. Uh, the next one in the category is a Chevy Volt. Now, Chevy Volt is really the hybrid, but we won't use that name because that's the name given to the Prius-type cars. Uh, but it's a, called a plug-in hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid, and they just came out 2000, late 2011, I guess it was. Uh, but in this case, it's, it'll run as an electric car for 40 miles, and then it converts to a regular hybrid operation like Prius. Uh, and then you get home, when you get home, you plug it into your uh, wall socket or, if, or a special recharging station that you buy if you want a faster charge. And once it recharges overnight, then it'll go about 40 miles just as an all electric car. The engine never cranks up. The engine never cranks up over that 40 miles unless you do some, they want some serious acceleration or do something unusual. And then when the batteries get low, it switches to a conventional hybrid operation just like the Prius burning all gasoline and uh, mileage is a, a hybrid kind of mileage, gasoline mileage. Uh, it has a medium size battery pack that has a lot to do with cost because these batteries in these cars are very expensive. 
uh, the batteries in this and the hybrid, this, uh, excuse me, the plug-in hybrid, the Chevy Volt is probably ten, twelve thousand dollars somewhere in that category. Uh, the range, because it'll flip over to gasoline when the batteries run out, uh, is the same as a conventional car. It just depends on how big a gasoline tank you have, and this has a conventional gasoline tank. So that's the Chevy Volt, which is the plug-in hybrid. The third type is what you hear so much about lately, and that's the all-electric car, which is the Nissan Leaf was the first one. I'm giving examples here of the first ones on the market. There are other uh, cars now, again, of manufacturers that have uh, models such as these, like the all-electric car. Uh, it gets all of its energy from charging batteries from the grid. It uses no electricity whatsoever. You never go to the filling station. And by the way, the plug-in hybrid doesn't go to the filling station either if you never drive more than 40 miles a day <clears throat> and can come back and recharge your batteries. But it gets it, this one doesn't have the option for uh, filling up with gasoline. And so all of this electricity and energy comes from coal, natural gas, hydro, wind, solar, et cetera. It uses no electricity. So this is the best winner for reducing our oil consumption. However, the big downside is it's got a range issue, range fright, we call it. And where you're talking about ranges of 50 to, to 100 miles. And when you run out of battery charge, you're stuck on the side of the highway and you got to get a tow truck to come get you for $75 or $100 and tow you to the nearest char charging station, which might be home. Uh, so, and, and they're right now fairly, usually the, uh, always the compact cars, unless you get something like the Tesla, which is a $100,000, $150,000 car, which is a whole nother ball game uh, that I won't go into because they're specialty type of cars. The technology can do it, but they're very expensive to get longer range. So uh, th that's the all-electric car, which on the oil conservation and oil savings is the best, but it's got, it's got issues with, with uh, the big battery pack that has a high price. They're probably $15,000, somewhere in that category uh, for an all-electric car. And, uh, and by the way, if you want air conditioning or heat in the summer or heat in the winter, that's going to cut your miles. That's the reason the, the range can drop to 50 miles or so from 70 to 100 without any, any air conditioning or heat. But uh, you turn the air conditioner on, it gets the energy to run the compressor from the batteries. And if you want heat, it gets electri uses electricity with the resistance heating to heat up the car. So. Uh, it, there, there's some trade-offs with all electric cars, but they're great cars for commuting around the city and never go out of the city. Um, so by switching to all electric cars saves oil. No oil is used for electricity. All, all cars burn, elect, all electric cars burn no oil. They, uh, the plug-in hybrids save some oil. Electricity from the grid places the oil, though that, that it uses. And it's pure electric operation, though, for the first 40 miles. Okay, I hope that clears up what the electric car confusion, which is kind of a muddy, muddy situation with all the models coming out. Thank you.